Hey everyone, it's 2020. The last review I did was of the Mixed Reality headsets, which sadly most of them went out of production. The same thing with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. So not counting the premium headsets like the Index or the Vive Pro or the Pimax. Um, these are the three headsets on the market right now that I've used and these are my thoughts on them. The Samsung Odyssey Plus, which is Windows Mixed Reality. It's one of the few that's still left. The Oculus Rift S and the Oculus Quest with an Oculus Link cable. So we're going to be talking about the Oculus Quest with an Oculus Link. Now, I have mixed feelings about the Quest. If you buy a Quest as a Quest, a standalone headset that doesn't need a, a computer, this is a great headset. It, it, it does everything really well. And I used it and I enjoyed it a lot. Having no cable and just using this for short bursts, it was really fun. And Beat Saber, all these games worked really well. The problem I have is recommending this as a PC headset. Because while it can connect to a PC using an Oculus Link cable, the experience versus what you pay for it just isn't worth it, in my opinion. Now, this isn't to say that if you have a Quest and happen to get a PC later, or you just bought a Quest because you wanted to try VR and then eventually wanted to try it on your PC, um, I'm not saying anything against that. Go ahead, try it like that. Plug it into a computer and experience PC VR. My problem is when people recommend this as a Rift S, as a headset because you want a full PC VR experience and the um, mobile VR experience. This, this headset does not deliver on a full PC VR experience. Hardware-wise, the screen in this is pretty much the same as the Vive Pro. It's the same resolution panels as the Vive Pro or the Odyssey Plus, and in theory, it should have the hardware to be a great device on the PC, but its limitations do hold it back. While the screen resolution and the panels themselves are great, it's been limited to 72 Hz. So this does affect gameplay. Um, not so much if, if you're just like playing around and having a fun experience, but if you want to play Beat Saber or anything competitive, that drop in refresh rate is quite noticeable. As well, even when this is plugged into a PC, you're not using the full potential of what your PC can put into it. Unlike the Rift S, or the, or the other headsets, this doesn't plug into your GPU. This plugs into a USB port. Your computer does all the rendering and then it, it compresses it and then it streams it over a cable to the headset. And this reads everything streamed to it. So, um, so because of that, uh, things are compressed and it doesn't look as good as it would look on other headsets. The render resolution is lower than the panels actually are. As well as that, uh, in most games, the middle is clear, but the outside is rendered in a lower resolution to save on how much has to be compressed and streamed over. This is something that I was able to forgive it in mobile mode, and I just enjoyed it. but. But when playing PC games, when I had experienced it in other headsets, it was just too distracting. Noticing the artifacting and uh, lower resolution around the edges. As well as the lower resolution, because the image is compressed, certain particle effects and things are compressed as well. Um, smoke, things like that, don't have quite the same look as uh, headsets plugged directly into your GPU have. It's something that was really cool that they were able to do and make the Quest so it was able to plug into a PC, 
but I would still not recommend it as something you buy for the purpose of using as a PC VR device. When it comes to audio, it's pretty much the same as the Rift S. It's got built-in speakers and a mic, um, but the speakers aren't really that good and you'll just want to plug in some headphones. When it comes to the comfort, this isn't really a comfortable headset. Um, all the weight is on the front and when I used it, it would like push down on my cheeks and I always found it like sliding down and forward. The only way to kind of stop that is to tighten it more, but then it just like pushes into your face and it wasn't really a pleasant experience the way it was out of the box. A lot of people, what they do is they'll um, like make a comfort strap or some people take battery packs, put it on the back to counterbalance the weight or some other people have gone and uh, use the Vive Deluxe Audio Strap and replace this strap with that. Um, but that's like an extra hundred bucks. So you have to take that into account. The default strap on this is all soft. It's like rubber. The old Oculus Rift was a rigid strap and supported a bit better, but this is just heavier and doesn't have that back support. So um, if you don't modify it, it's not the most comfortable headset for like playing for a while. The controller tracking is pretty much the same as the rear of desk. It's the same inside out tracking, same controllers. Um, the range of accurate tracking is slightly smaller, but it's not that bad. The biggest issue with the tracking on this while plugged into a computer is your tracking latency goes up. When this is just in standalone mode, this tracking is really good. The latency is really low and it just feels good. But when this is plugged into a computer along with the streaming and all of that, the tracking latency gets worse. And it's, I'd say worse than Windows Mixed Reality. It just, it feels floaty. And it's fine if you wanna experience some PC VR games, but again, like I said before, I would not trust this as something to use for competitive games or anything like like that it's still it, it it works well and you don't it's it's not like it lags behind it's just it doesn't feel the same so it's just something to take into account with this headset if you're planning to use it primarily as a PC VR headset something else i want to say is this will cost more than a Rift S if you want to use it for the PC because you'll, you'll need to buy a cable that runs from the headset to the USB port. The one that comes with it is a USB 2.0. What you need is a USB 3.0 with a um, USB-C connector on one side. Now, Oculus is making their own cable, which will be about $100. You can use other third-party options, such as like ones on Amazon, but from different people trying them, not all of them have worked. Um, some of them, they'll buy them and they don't work and only like one out of a whole bunch will work. So just take that into consideration if you wanna use the official one and pay extra or risk running through a whole bunch of, of different ones trying to find one that uh, works. So overall, my impression of the Quest is, is it's a great headset for what it is. Running its Android-based platform in standalone mode works awesome and does great as its own little thing. But using it as a PC VR device, especially if that's what you plan to use most of the, of the time, it's, it's not the best option. While it can do it, if you plan to play primarily PC games, I, I'd rather go with the Odyssey.